Hello, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm really happy to talk about this show because it sounds amazing so far from what we've seen. Yeah. Uh, for your part, what do you want to tell us to start off? What do you want people to know before they see the, the show? Well, um, firstly, people should be prepared for this moustache. <laughs> because it's, uh, it's, it's based on Tom Selleck's Magna moustache. And I uh, cannot believe it's taken so long for me to be in a show where I get to grow facial hair like this. I want to, I want to have facial hair in every show I do. I wish I'd been born in 1850 so I could have had one of these all the time. But yeah, it's, um, uh, it's a really interesting really interesting show it's a crime drama right. so every week there is a, a, a crime to solve but um, it's so much more than that it's um, two fascinating men uh, Harry Houdini everyone knows him the famous escapologist who's still famous hugely famous today yeah. and Arthur Conan Doyle who I play a writer of possibly one of the most famous characters in all of literature yeah. it's got to be up there all Think Sherlock Holmes. Uh, two very different men. Houdini, the brash New York, New World American um, showman, show off cynic, you know, I suppose uh, he's, a, he's a skeptic about psychics and mediums, thinks they're all frauds. They all need to be debunked, they all need to be shown up for the, the you know, the damage they cause to vulnerable people. And Arthur Conan Doyle, cricket player, football player, um, a doctor, right. writer of Sherlock Holmes, a real polymath, real round, all round kind of talent, who does believe in spiritualism, does believe that there is an afterlife, does believe that there is something in that, and wants to prove it scientifically. Hmm. It's the Victorian X Files. Right. That's amazing. That's a good tagline, actually. So, playing a real person, what did you research to play him, or what, what did you pull on to yeah, play him? it's interesting playing a real person, because I've, done a, I've played a few now, uh, and sometimes playing famous literary characters can be almost as much pressure. I played Adrian Mole, for example, right. that you see. I played Tony Blair. Um, I didn't know you played Tony, Tony Blair. Oh, Blair, I'm sorry. Tony times. And... What's interesting about that is that you, you quickly learn that you're playing the character in the script. Right. You're not playing the real person. Right. And sometimes the script wants you to get as close as possible to the real person. Mm -hmm. And other times they want to use an essence of him. So in a way, you know, Arthur Conan Doyle didn't really look like me. Right. He didn't sound like me. And... Um, the character I play is really a brand new creation, but obviously elements of his real life are thrown in there. So I didn't feel compelled to tie myself down to much reality. And actually, you know, luckily he was around a long time ago, and no one really knows what he looked or right. like. So we st we started again. That must make life a lot easier as an actor uh, as well. I can't imagine having to be tied too closely to certain characteristics. Yeah, sometimes you know you really need to try and. Uh, it's funny, I mean, I, I played Dirk Gently, for example, right. uh, who is described in very, you know, he's a chubby, middle-aged man, and uh, when I played him, I was a lot thinner and younger, Right. Uh, and some people get upset, people get upset when Dan Craig was cast as James Bond, because Bond isn't Bond, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> He's blonde in the books, he can't. I think essentially, if the show you're in is interesting and entertaining and compelling, I think hopefully a lot of those questions fall by the wayside. So. I have to say though, in terms of Dirk Gently, you, I, I immediately identified with you as that character, so for me it was a, a big deal to have someone who actually, for me, embodied I had great fun. That it. whole thing, yeah. He's the only other detective I've really played. If you can call Doyle a detective in this. Uh, right. Um, and that is a great connection point. I do kind of love that that symmetry, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They're very different styles, detective. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I, very I, I, I was, <laughs> suppose so. Quite a bit different writing as well, yeah. of course. <laughs> 
So, in terms of actually, I, I have a little bit of a, a preview, I guess you could say, what, what's to come, but essentially you guys are uncovering things to find out what the truth is behind maybe a series of events that, that are befuddling people at the time. Yeah. Is that essentially a good That's way to describe it? I mean, you know, we're dealing with a, a period in time where the social thing really is forensics. Right. Fingerprinting had only just started to come in. Hmm. I think if they turned up at a crime scene, this pool of blood, they'd say, oh, it's disgusting, somebody clean it up. Yeah. There would be no roping it off <laughs> doing tests, because what else are you going to do? I think yeah, look, it's cool. It must be so easy to get away with murder in those right. days. Unless you were literally caught hitting <laughs> someone in the face with a sledgehammer. Right. How, how could they... There were no fibre testing. And, <laughs> so, um, Victorian or Edwardian London. A series of crimes that have possibly some kind of supernatural element to them. Mm. A ghost is killing nuns. Uh, and what I love about this series, what I think it's really sets it apart, is that every episode has its a really different flavour. Mm. So we have, for example, we've just finished shooting episodes seven and eight. Eight is a kind of gothic horror mm. with Bram Stoker, the writer of Dracula, um, and it's got a it's, it's a real horror show. Whereas episode seven is a kind of psychological thriller. Mm. Uh, when, Doyle completely flips out and goes into some really dark place. And each episode has a real different flavour, which I love. It's not a it's not the sort of show where you turn up and it's pretty much the same story every right. week, but with different, you know, suspects and murder, you know, people being murdered. Each episode has an entirely different flavour, and that's, I think that will hopefully keep people coming back. And in terms of the relationships, what's his take on? Obviously, there's two main people. So, what, what's his take on these these cohorts? He's he's tricks well, around with. He's the ultimate skeptic. He doesn't believe in anything. You know. Right. His first reaction is not of open-minded wonder. <laughs> it's how do they do that? Right. Who? What, what trick do they pull? What was the sleight of hand involved? And he's so famous that I think he's the target for me. I want to convince him. If I can convince Harry Houdini that there is an afterlife, there is a spirit life, then I can convince the world. Right. So he's the ultimate prize for Doyle. And I think vice versa as well. Right. So I think they have a lot of respect for each other, but they can't help but wind each other up. Uh, I find Which is his, half the joy of it, I'm half sure. Half the joy. Yeah. I find his brash American um, sensibility irritating. Right. You know, we don't do things like that. So there's a lot of that as well. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And in terms of Constable, um, uh, yes. Uh, where? What does he think about her? What's? Well, I think Doyle has a lot of respect for Constable Strand. She's the first woman police officer. Um, and I think Doyle is a very enlightened man. He's, he's, he doesn't think she should run back to the kitchen. Um, I think he was very impressed with her, her guts and her courage. And you forget how, what a man's world it was and how, I mean, women didn't have the votes. Right. At that point. So to stand to sort of, you know, take on that role and be a, a police officer shows a lot of guts. And also she's starting out, it's hard for her. You know, she's dealing with these two incredibly famous celebrities who are known around the world and she's teamed up with them. She's just starting her career, she's only in her early twenties. So it adds it adds a sort of uh, a whole other quality to the, to the mix. And in terms of brawn, uh, do do do, uh, do you guys end up kind of offering up some brawn in here, or what's? Well, Houdini is constantly diving into. I can imagine Houdini. Into, yeah, you know, uh, leaping off walls, being handcuffed and thrown into cages. And, uh, and Doyle smokes a pipe and sits right. in the typewriter. Well, that's what I'm thinking because I mean, you do understand him to be at least you know worldly. But yeah. I guess the question is, does he does he know how to he does throw a punch? Step up to the mark. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Occasionally steps up to the mark. I do punch people. <laughs> uh, I do get a bit tasty. Um, 
but that's not his way. He's sort of he is the more of the Sherlock, I suppose. He's, right. he's the clue finder. Um, but yeah, occasionally I am called upon to get physical. Nice. Is that uh, what is that like for you as an actor? I mean. You don't have a lot of experience, really, with no, I've that kind really of thing. No, the kind of James Bondy type. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I play. Um, I would say it's nice for me not to be doing comedy, even though there is comedy in this. Right. It's nice to be doing a drama because right. it's very easy to get pigeonholed as the man, the comedy guy. So right. uh, that was a big appeal for me was to do a bit of that. Hmm. And if I occasionally get to punch someone as well, <laughs> all for good. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.